And I trusted him because he was a priest and someone who I thought really understood why this meant so much to me. I think that's why I got myself into the situation that I did. But one night he decided that this was all too frustrating and was, he wanted more and so he, he went further than I had, was anticipating. And to be honest, it was too late before I realised what was really happening and I was a bit shocked which is a slight understatement. I, I do remember the tears rolling down. That's the one thing out, out of the whole uh, horrid incident I remember. Um, and then not knowing who to talk to or wanting to talk to about it. And for me, the really difficult thing was I felt the most precious gift that I felt I could give my husband to be would have been my virginity, and that was taken from me um, by someone I had trusted. And the shame and the guilt of that is what kept me so quiet and silent for so many years. Mm. And having talked to other friends, that's exactly the same problem too. And we were in a culture where I think we believe that we encouraged the guys. It was our fault if we took them too far. And then out the blue, I got an email uh, from this chap um, last year apologising for mucking me around um, and for crossing boundaries. Um, and that said to me, he knew um, what the problem had been. I mean, he didn't use the word rape. But I suppose the question in my own mind and the thing that I'd beaten myself up about was, um, had he gone on to do this with other people if he felt able to do that with me? Was this somebody who was in a serial um, uh, uh, predator? Or was it just a one-off, really unfortunate situation? And so I did go and talk to the police about it. But I then began to understand how complicated reporting this sort of thing was and what I call how nuclear an option it is, you, you know. Um, and for me, the biggest issue was that, um, sadly, if you're a priest, your livelihood, your house, uh, everything uh, is part of your job. And if you lose that, your wife and your children also suddenly start to suffer. And it's very difficult, therefore, for someone like myself, to think, am I willing to put another woman in that situation? And so I, I must admit, I did what I think many people did. I chose not to push uh, this any further. And therefore, that left me in this horrid in-between place of feeling guilty for not taking it further, but also feeling ashamed that I'd let this happen. And it wasn't just the police that you raised it with. You raised it with the church as well? I did. Um, I raised it anonymously to begin with. I rang uh, um, a safeguarding officer who I thought would be in charge of his area to ask what would happen. And I have to be honest, the response I got from that gentleman was atrocious. And in fact, I said as much towards the end of the phone call that uh, I, I'd, it taken me 20 years to get to a point of calling um, and to have be brushed off. I was originally told that he was on the way to the gym and could he ring me back? And he, you know, he was, it, was, oh, it was an awful experience. Um, and that didn't give me any faith. I then spoke to another female safeguarding officer who came down and met with me. Then I got this email, actually, I was thinking, um, and I shared that email um, with certain church authorities, including a bishop, who suggested that I should perhaps just let it go. Um, In writing, the bishops? No, no, just, just, just advised me. Um, I think because of my work as a campaigner for LGBT rights, you know, the question was, Jane, you'll put yourself in an awful, I mean, this wasn't said, but this is how I, I took it to mean, you know, it, you'll put yourself in a very difficult position. I know I was aware that um, evangelicals might think, well, no wonder you're gay if you've been raped. You know, there's all sorts of other lines that people may say, but the bottom line is this person should have been perhaps brought to justice, I should have been supported and encouraged to bring out the truth. We've been hearing all these allegations in Westminster. Now you're saying this goes on in the church. How widespread is it? It's widespread, I'm afraid to say. I've heard stories of women who have been harassed uh, by bishops down to curates and clergy, um, people in positions of, of, of power. How widespread? don't think any of us know, but when you see that nearly every friend of yours has, has taken part in the Me Too campaign, it makes you realise that it's sadly probably far more prevalent than we realise. Women are finally starting to find the courage to talk about it. And what I would say to a woman is that, you know, if you've been carrying something for years, find someone you trust, 
a girlfriend, I don't know, your mother, and just start talking about it because the weight of carrying, the shame that often many people wrongly feel, it, it, it crushes you. Uh, we have, a, sadly, I think, various issues in the church that we have to understand. Why have we kept so many secrets? Why has this not been dealt with? One of the troubles that we, the church, have is that we, um, we oversee our own safeguarding. We are judge and arbitrator of our own safeguarding policies, and I think that's ridiculous. I think we have to outsource it to a third party who everybody can have confidence in, and that will start, I hope, a new day when we can be really true that there is no compromise. Have you found it difficult to speak out now? Yeah, I'm finding this more difficult than I had realised, but I'm keen to do it. Silence has been what's kept the problem alive, and we have to start speaking out. Jane Ozan, thank you very much. Thank you. And the Church of England National Safeguarding Team told us in a statement, any allegations of sexual assault are treated with the utmost seriousness. We are absolutely committed to making the church a safer place for all, and will always act on any new information relating to allegations. We will always consider any proposals that could help improve our practices, and all bishops are now committed to undergoing disclosure training. Well, if you've been affected by any of the issues in that report, you can find support at channel4.com support.